how's everybody doing today? True love and fishing here. Uh, today is one of those examples of a day that uh, all week you're checking the weather um, up until the last minute. A uh, weatherman says it's going to be 70% chance of rain and blowing and just unfavorable fishing conditions and then you kind of sleep in which is unusual. You wake up and weather is good. Uh, turning bad now this afternoon but could have got plenty of fishing in this morning. So we will take this opportunity today uh, without doing a fishing video. We're going to do a little technique how-to video. Uh, before I get into that, um, these videos are not to insult anyone's intelligence. Uh, a lot of people way more knowledgeable, excuse that ding, on fishing than I am. But I was one of those guys when I was starting out fishing, um, watching YouTube videos like you're doing right now, um, researching websites on what's the best techniques, what's the best rigs, um, how to even tie some of these things. Um, in the old days, we were using swivels and leaders that were not fluorocarbon and stuff like that. And it was just talking to guys and, hey, what are you doing? And, and basically networking until I found what works best for me. So if this doesn't work best for you, that's fine. And if you've got a better way to do it, by all means, uh, shoot that down there in the comments. And then I can improve my skill set as well. Uh, what I want to talk about a little bit today is basically... I fish braid to leader um, predominantly. Um, I fish inshore. I technically or typically use about a 15 to 20 pound braid and I will attach that to, depending on my water depth, usually about a two foot fluorocarbon leader that can range anywhere from 15 pounds to 20 pounds unless we're going for something massive uh, like giant snook or, or bull redfish, then we'll go up to like a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon leader, it's a tough word sometimes. But So what I want to talk about is joining those two. Like I said previously, um, when I first started out fishing, I would go straight from my braid to a swivel, and then the other end of the swivel would go to the fluorocarbon leader and then to a hook. But People a lot smarter than me have, have been able to prove that a fish can actually see that small swivel. And it's all about getting more hook sets. It's all about getting more fish. And I think this will help you out. It's helped me out tr tremendously. Uh, the knot I use, um, I know a lot of people use the FG knot. I use the uni to uni. It's always worked for me. It's an easy knot to do. And it, uh, it hasn't failed me. So I continue to do that. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that with the actual leader in fluorocarbon. And then I'm going to try to show you on a larger scale what that looks like to make it a little easier. I know that's what helped me in the past. So the knot that I use is the uni to uni that goes to a loop knot, which will attach to the actual either jig head or hook or lure that I'm using. And the reason I use a loop knot on some of those I will show you once I rig it is it allows way more action um, if you had the knot that just went straight to the lure or the jig head it's kind of makes it a little more um, just not as flexible from swaying left to right up and down where that loop knot gives it way more action in the water which once again is going to improve those um, those strikes the just the amount of fish you put on board. So uh, we'll get into that in a second. I'm going to actually change the camera angle. We're going to look at uh, what we're doing and tying some of them things. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. All right. So I wanted to show you an example of the old school I was talking about. Braid to fluorocarbon leader. Big, bulky, not good going to improve your bites tremendously. So over exaggerated two pieces. Let's uh let's say the blue is the main line. This is going to be your braid coming off of the actual reel and we're going to call the white line your fluorocarbon leader. So what you're going to do is you're going to allow for about four or five inches, whatever makes you comfortable. 
and you're going to just basically do this. You're going to overlap braid and fluorocarbon leader. We're going to start with the braid. So with the braid, you're going to make a little loop. It's going to look like so. So there's your fluorocarbon leader, there's your braid, you've made a loop. You're going to start feeding that through. Now I'm only going to do two here, but when you're doing it for real, you're going to want to do about four. And then you're going to pull that. It's not sliding as good as it would with braid. What that's going to leave you is the other side. You're going to repeat the process with the fluorocarbon leader. And you're going to feed that through and you're going to do that four times. And when you do, it's going to allow you to join both of those together like so. And you just pull that tight. Okay, now I'm going to show you the actual uni knot using the fluorocarbon leader and the braid. So you're going to stack one upon the other just like we did with the larger ropes. Um, I'm holding the braided end right now. You're going to make one loop. You can see I have the leader in the loop as well. And then I'm going to wrap both lines four times. Two, three, and four. Then I'm going to grab the end of that braid and I'm going to pull it. And you can see it's going to tighten up on that leader. All right, then you're going to just do the exact same thing using the leader. You're going to grab that leader end, you're going to make a loop, and you're going to wrap both lines also four times. And then you're going to grab the end of that leader and you're going to pull that. You're going to let, wet that line and then you're going to grab both ends. You're going to hold the braid in one hand, the leader in the other hand, and you're just going to pull away from each other and you're going to see that line cinch down upon itself. You're going to make sure that's really tight. That's going to leave you with two tag ends, one from the braid, one from the fluorocarbon. Get you something very sharp. Uh, the braid can be hard to cut, so regular scissors won't work. And you're going to snip those as close as possible. And I want you to see the difference this is compared to what I showed you earlier with the swivels and how small and really seamless that is. It's very strong. Uh, the other time you can use this, which I like to do, is if I'm putting line on a new reel. Uh, sometimes braid can get really expensive, so what I'll do is I'll throw some backing of mono on the reel. I'll put a, about 50 yards sometimes. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you throw a little bit on there. And then I'll attach that mono to the braid, and then I'll finish the the reel out with however much braid I want to put on there. It just uh, saves some money and another good thing is it lets you know when you're about to run out of braid. If you got a good fight on and he's pulling some good drag and you start to see braid showing you need to, you need to make a decision quick because he's about to spool you. Alright let's clip this and then I want to show you close up the loop knot we discussed. So I'm going to use this circle hook. Uh, this is called a no-brainer. And this is the same thing you'll do with a jig head, a circle hook, a lure, um, to give you a little more action. So take the end of your leader and you're just going to make a little loop. And you can see i got a little loop right there. You're going to make it about about that size, put your fingers on it to keep it from getting any tighter. Come into the back side of whatever you're tying on. 
and it'll look like this. Bring that tag end through that loop you made and then bring that loop down to about right there. Put your fingers back on that to keep it from tightening up and then you're going to wrap that leader with that tag end four times and then come back through that circle that you made and pull that tag end in the main line at the same time and that is going to give you your loop knot you're going to clip that tag end of course It's going to look like that. And what that's going to do is instead of just tying that tight right on that hook that doesn't allow a lot of play and a lot of action, that loop allows that thing to really move around and that's going to increase, or it has for me, increase your strikes and increase your uh, chances. Simple loop knot. All right. Well, that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed these uh, little tips and tricks that work for me. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Uh, this is my second video if you're enjoying what I'm putting out there. If you can subscribe to it, that would also be appreciated. And um, I'll see you guys in the future. Thank you. Bye.